It's for my old friend, Mrs. Beddoes. Poor old soul. 93 today. Uh, generous to a fault as usual, Mrs. Bridges. Here, let me beg it for you. Oh, thank you, Miss Hudson. Well, she took me under her wing. She was cook to Lady Templeman. And I was just starting out. Her lobster patties was the talk of Mayfair. <laughs> and as for her gooseberry trifle, oh, to end up forgotten in a basement room in Camden Town. <laughs> There ought to be a law against it. Oh, that's what indeed, Mrs. Bridget. Is Rose taking this round for you? Yes, I am, Mr. Hudson. Now, you've got the address, Rose. Do you mind how you go with it? I will. Don't worry, Mrs. Bridget. Ah, uh, here you are, then, Rose. Well, you going my way, Rose? Look, where are you going? I'm going to see Daisy in hospital, see what she looks like with her hands and eyes out. Same as with the men, I should think. I know, Rose. That was a joke. Oh. What are you taking them for? She won't be able to eat nothing. Well, what can I take of them? Nice, pretty bunch of flowers, if you want to show her how much you care. You rotten rose. There they are, Hurry along now. Hurry along, please. They're lined out. Sorry. Look what you've done. I'm uh, surely sorry. Look at it. Sirs. You've ruined it. Did you, uh, did you beg it yourself? Clumsy. Yeah, you're, you're right, I am. That's what my mother used to say. All right for you to joke. Someone was expecting this. Well, it's, it's not the end of the world, is it? I'll buy you a replacement. You can't. Not one like this. What am I going to do? Yes, please. Camden Town. Thank you. Any more fish? The same, please. Camden Town. Thank you very much. What sort was it? Plum, if you must know. I want a nice plum cake, please. With almonds. With almonds? It's no use. It won't be the same. What's so special about it? It was baked by an expert. Oh. You? Not me, as it happens. Your mother? It was baked by a friend of mine to give to a friend of hers who also happens to be an expert. She know immediately if it's shop bought and I'll be in trouble. Sorry, no plum. Nice lemon sponge or a gingerbread or some California jumbles. Ah, they sound good. Not them, they've got wine in them. She's 93. Oh, just a tick of a 93, back her up a bit. Now. Hurry up. There's others behind. All right, we'll take the uh, the lemon sponge. Thank you. Tempting taken, please. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Best I could do. Thank you. Right. Well, Good change, yeah. sir. Oh, thank you. That's done. Uh, how about having some tea with me? What? I've got to go. Deliver this. Well, have some tea first. Come on. Here. Yeah, come on. Have some tea. Well. But I don't know who you are. Oh. Wilmot. Gregory Wilmot's my name. <laughs> What's yours? Nice bumping into Miss Buck. Shouldn't Rose or someone be doing that? I enjoy arranging flowers. Yeah, who sent them anyway? Nobody sent them. I bought them. Not all of them? Rather extravagant, wasn't it? It is spring. In case you hadn't noticed. Yes, I had noticed, but there's no need to keep proving it quite so relentlessly. This is a pointless conversation. Agreed. Are you coming to change? I'm 
father on this farm. Quite small in Yorkshire, in Driffield. He went through hard times with it. Did you know in the last 25 years to the turn of the century, one third of the labouring population left the land? No. That's right. But my father, he kept faith with his men. You see, he believed in the labour movement like I do, and, and, well, things improved slowly. Have another scone. Yes, I will. Go on. Yeah, Don't you be good. wasted. Tea. Thank you very much. Why did you go to Australia? Dad's idea. Land of opportunity. But he'd never come out and join me there. Hmm. So you've come home to see him? No, no, he died a couple of months back. Just fell down his own fields, just like that. Right, it's the way he wanted. I've just come back to settle up his affairs. I go back in a fortnight. Right. Now, you tell me about yourself, your family. Nothing to tell. My father was lodge keeper to the Earl of Southwold. That's where I was brought up on the estate. And now I work for his grandson, Captain James Bellamy, in Eaton Place. Oh, yes? In what capacity? Pardon? What do you do? Head house parlour maid. No point in pretending different. No reason why I should. It's a very respectable job. Respectable? That's just about all it is. And worthwhile, too, if you're good at it. And I bet you are. Yeah. Well, you'd have to ask other people that, wouldn't you? Yeah. I've got to go. Deliver the cake. Oh, yeah. uh, would you like me to come with you to explain the oh, accident? No, no. I'm better on my own, really. Yeah. Right. Well, I'll see you tomorrow, won't I? Australia, Rose, what a strange question. What prompts it? Nothing. I heard an Australian talking on the tram, and you're always saying how we should be curious and interested in things, and I don't know anything about it, that's all. Australia is a large, uncomfortable place with a hot and dusty climate, full of convicts and swindlers and bad living conditions. And certainly no place for a young woman if you're thinking of emigrating. A sheep station, 8,000 head, about 100 miles west of Melbourne. In the bush? Oh, it's, it's not too isolated. There's a town quite near. And, well, we make our own company living on the property. <laughs> That's my brother Tim and three of the jackaroos who help us out. I've got a brother called Tim. He went to Canada to do forestry. Well, now, isn't that amazing? <laughs> that is a coincidence. <laughs> that must be fake, mustn't it? It's you. Yeah. You know, I... I think you'd go for it out there. Uh, the sheer size and beauty of the place. The colours. Delicate. Soft and faded. Have you ever wanted to travel? A question of wanting, is it? Housemates don't get the chance. You can't? No coldness and damp out there. from my old friend, Mrs. Bellows. She thanks me very kindly for the lemon sponge. Says, why could I not have baked one myself? Oh, what on earth does she mean by that? Oh, I don't know, Mrs. Bridges. She's probably got muddled in the head. They do, don't they, when they're 93? Oh, the rest of the letter's sharp enough. <laughs> very sharp indeed. <laughs> Still, I don't think you're right. You're coming with us to Richmond Park tomorrow. Richmond Park, Mrs. Bridges? To see the deer. They're going out upstairs for the day, so we thought we'd take a picnic. No, I can't. Not tomorrow. Oh. Well, I've got to see some friends. Um, friends of my brother's over from Canada. Married couple. Got to look after them. Well, bring them to Richmond Park. Make a lovely outing for them. Yes, that is a good idea. Mm. Only... They want to see the Tower of London. Just do what I'm doing. Miss Lizzie talks. 
taught me once. I'm too clumsy, Rouse. Look, if we don't do it properly, we get thrown out. You really are. Let's, let's go and sit down. I don't think it's quite respectable. Yeah, I think you're right. Place. Make it sound like Buckingham Palace. Oh, I suppose it's much different. Mr. Hudson wouldn't think so, anyhow. Now, you're Mr. Hudson. He sounds a bit of a, a bit of a wowser to me. Wowser? It's an Australian word for Puritan, killjoy, non-drinker. Oh no, he isn't. That's not fair. He has to be a bit strict. He's got a sense of humour. He has a drink sometimes. I bet you have a drink sometimes. Well, you know. After a hard day's work, I do like a few beers, but I don't drink to excess, Rose. Not like some of them. I don't mind a man who drinks. In moderation. No, it's funny. This time in ten days, all this. Do you remember it? Ten days? I'll be sailing out of Tilbury for the open sea. Won't see you again. Why not come with me? Oh, yes. I'm serious, Ralph. Is your spirit of adventure? I get quite a lot of adventure in my life. You'd be surprised. Mr. Hudson, Mrs. Bridges. What's his name? Edward. And they're not all stuck in the muds like you seem to think. I never said they were ours. I wouldn't judge anybody before I'd met them. Let's go meet them now. What? I want to see this famous house of yours. We can't. We can't. We've already started our tea. What's the matter? You're ashamed of me. has to stop in and, and mind place whilst yes, they're alive. Yes, well, you don't have to mind the place now I'm back. Go on, you go out for a walk. Yes, Rose. Don't look well. This gentleman's just come to see Mr. Hudson. Uh, Mr. Hudson's gone out with Mrs. No, Bridges. Well, you going out too. A nice walk down the road. Bye, Ruby. Uh, she's a kitchen maid. Bit simple. Would you like a cup of tea? Mm, no, no. <laughs> Can I sit down? Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> Aren't you gonna? Somebody might come in. Well, they're all conveniently in Richmond Park. Conveniently? You don't want me to meet them, do you? Your family. Oh, I don't care if you meet them. Your idea coming back here, I wanted to stay at the Tay so I was really enjoying it. Aren't you enjoying it now? Along with me? Now this... Uh, this could almost be my house. Not much difference. Except you, you get more sunlight from the window. And I, I made my own furniture. I meant it, Rose, when I said come with me. How about it, eh? Ridiculous. I don't see why. I'm not such a bad fellow. I'm 35 years old and doing quite well for myself. I'll look after you. Don't be daft. It's not that I'm worried about. Well, then. Why me? 
Why pick on me when you could do so much better? Better? I don't think I could. I'm a house parlour maid. Just about the best qualifications I can think of for, for a wife. A wife? We, we, we don't have to get married right away. You, you can just come out then. Look around before you make up your mind. I'll pay your fare back if you don't like it. I'll buy you a return bow ticket. What do you say? Oh. You're not frightened of me, are you? Of course I'm not. Why should I be? Well, there's no reason to be, because I, I, wouldn't, do, I wouldn't do anything to upset you against your will. Not until after we're married, anyway. You would before? I you know what I mean. I don't know what Mr. Hudson would say. Ah, oh, the heck with Mr. Hudson. I'm sorry, Riles, but... Well, you, you can make up your own mind, can't you? Look, you don't know what you're doing to me. I've never been like this before, not with anyone. <sighs> Please, don't make fun of me. I wouldn't do that, Riles. I swear it. I've never been more serious in my life. Do you think I'd take the chance of making you unhappy? Do you think I'd lumber myself with an English girl out there in the wilds? No, no, it's, it's, it's not wild. But, but do you think I would? Unless I was absolutely certain we could make a go of it. Now, I was certain the moment I saw you on that tram. Oh, I can't help thinking you want an housekeeper, not a wife. Someone to cook, sew and scrub the floors for you and your friends. No. Pick up some housemaid, they probably said. How can you think that? Raz, look at me. How can you think that? Because you haven't mentioned the word love yet. This may sound stupid, but I always thought that if this ever happened to me, and I never thought it would, I'd hear the word love. <laughs> well, of course I love you. I wouldn't be asking you if I didn't. All right to say it now. I love you. I do love you. Yeah, now. And I've never said it to anybody ever before in my life. Well, is that better? Oh, I can't dress things up in fancy words. You use fancy words when you talk about Australia. When you talk about Australia, you sound like a poet. Yeah, well, that's different. Can't answer back. But now I've done my bit, now it's your turn. You say that word to me if you feel you can. Because nobody's ever said it to me before, either. I'm very fond of you, Gregory. You don't love me. Oh, I don't really know you. You always have to make things so, so difficult for yourself, you women. I mean, all I see is you and me and, and fate bringing us together on some London tram. And both of us knowing really right away. <laughs> so simple. Simple? What's simple about it? I've only known you four days and you're asking me to uproot myself, leave the life I know all my friends, to travel thousands of miles away to a foreign country full of convicts and swindlers and bad living when... Don't rush. Take your time. But I'll have to know soon. If I'm going to get your passage booked. Right? A man in here yesterday while we was out. Yes, uh, said he wanted to see Mr. Hudson. Did he leave his name or state his business? No, said he'd call back, said it wasn't important. Ha! Huh, that's not what Ruby told me. Yes, well, it's none of our business, is it? I've told you all I know. I don't think you have, Rose. All right, he was a friend of mine. A friend of yours? 
and you told me you was going to the Tower of London with a married couple friends of your brother's. Now, that's not very truthful, Rose. Oh, just a casual acquaintance. Nothing wrong, is there? An acquaintance? Whom you brought back here when the rest of the house was deserted? When you knew it would be deserted? You know my opinion of that, Rose. If it had been an old friend, it would have been a different matter, but just a casual acquaintance. Since you're all being so flaming nosy, he wasn't just a casual acquaintance, he's... What, Rose? He's my fiancé, if you must know. You what? My fiancé, Mr. Hudson. <laughs> Come off it, Rose. Pull the other one. Are you engaged to be married? What's wrong? I was much right as anyone. Well, why didn't you tell us, Rose? Well, I was going to, but he only asked me yesterday, and I haven't quite made up my mind. I'm still thinking it over. I was waiting till it was official. Well, don't say you're all pleased for me. Well, naturally we're pleased, Rose. Congratulations. But you can't expect us to be overjoyed till we know a wee bit more about him. Oh, quite right, Miss Watson. Well, who is he, Rose? And why have you kept him so quiet? His name's Gregory Wilmot. He's 35 years old, and he's a sheep farmer. A sheep farmer? Well, that's a respectable enough occupation. Whereabouts does he farm, Rose? Australia. Hey? You're never telling us you're going to live in Australia, Rose. I don't know. I haven't made my mind up yet, like I told you. That's why she was asking me about Australia the other day. How long have you known him, Rose, and where did you meet him? I've known him quite a while, and I met him out. Out? Where? Did he pick you up, Rose? No, he didn't. He fell on me, if you must know. He fell on you, Rose? Mm, in a tram. Got pushed against me. And you just got talking, just like that? He apologised like a proper gentleman. That's how we got talking. <laughs> Look, if you met him, you wouldn't be so suspicious. We'd like to meet him, Rose. We'd like to meet him very much. Yes. You bring him to tea, Rose. Yeah, let's have a look at him, Rose. After all, Ruby's only had the honour so far. He's not a performing seal. No, he's a performing kangaroo if he comes from Australia. Edward, that is not very funny. No, Mr. Hudson. Bring him to tea tomorrow, Rose. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Hudson. Mrs. Bridges. Mrs. Bridges. Pleased to meet you. Edward. How do you do? Ruby. Oh, yes, I've met Ruby. Gregory Wilmot. Well, it's, uh, it's a great pleasure to meet you all. Mind you, I feel I know you already from what Rouse has told me. We've heard something about you too, Mr. Wilmot. Won't you take a seat? I will. Thank you. Oh, uh, here's a small present for you. Can you drink whiskey? Yes, of course we do, Gregory. Thank you. Most useful. Thank you. Oh, no. Don't you sit there, Gregory. You sit in the middle between me and Rose. You don't mind if I call you Gregory? No. Thank you. Ruby, fetch the pot. <coughs> Please. Rose says you're a sheep farm in Australia. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Very interesting work, I should imagine. What do you do exactly? Well, we buy the sheep up in Queensland because it's cheaper than... We bring them down to the station, we shear them, fatten them up, and sell them. They should end up in your kitchen, Mrs Bridges. Oh, yes. We had some Australian lamb last week. Very tender it was, too. <laughs> Is it a large concern, Mr. Wilmot? Well, I... Yes, Gregory's got 8,000 head of sheep. It's growing fast. By the end of the year, I hope to have another thousand. I believe it's hard to find satisfactory labour. Yeah, I've heard they're all convicts and tickets of leave men. Well, they're not. They're called jackaroos, and he's got three of them. And he's got a brother called Tim, Mr. Hudson. Isn't that an amazing coincidence? Amazing. It, it's a great exaggeration, all this about convicts. I mean, I've got as loyal a bunch of fellas working for me as you could ever hope for. If Rose did come out with you, Gregory, she would live in a proper house. It certainly wouldn't be a basement, Mrs Bridges. No, it's like this room here, only the sun comes in, oh. and Gregory makes his own furniture, don't you? That's right. Is there a church nearby? A church? A Protestant church. Rose attends church regularly. 
It's an important part of her life, as no doubt she's told you. Yes. Well, there's a church in the town, I think. Yes, I'm, I'm sure there is. There's no need to worry about Riles, Mr. Hudson, if she does decide to come out there. The greatest difference you'll find is that there's no class uh, consciousness. She'll be treated like an equal at last. An equal to what, may I ask? Uh, do you take milk and sugar, Gregory? Uh, yes, both, thank you. She won't be a house parlour maid. It, everybody's beck and call all the time. Oh, but uh, that's what she's used to. That's the only thing she knows how to do. I don't believe that, Mrs Bridges. But won't she be at your beck and call, uh, as your wife, I mean? She, she'll be free, that's what I mean, Edward. A free woman. Well, she's, she's free now. Oh, well, free is as good for her. I mean, no disrespect to you, Mrs Bridges, or to you, Mr Hudson. It, but it's the system you live under, the... Oh, the whole outmoded class structure of this country. You're a socialist, then? I am. Only in Australia, because Labour's in power, isn't it? <laughs> it is, I'm pleased to say. He wouldn't vote Labour in England? Oh, yes, I would. Uh, being out of this country for so long, Mr Wilmot, I don't think you quite realise what's happening here. If the working classes are allowed to organise themselves into powerful trade unions, uh, they begin to disrupt the nation with strikes. Why, in this past year... They only want better living conditions, man. A decent wage for their wives and families. You're a working man. You may be comfortable enough here in Eden Place, but you've just got to think of your fellow workers outside it, in the cold. Well, I don't think we should talk about politics anymore. We'll all have a nice piece of chocolate cake, Edward. I think you've got a point there, Mr Wilmot. You know, I've never seen it that way before. Naturally, everyone's entitled to his own view, Edward. When are you returning to Australia, Mr Wilmot? Friday. Not this very next Friday. Thank you. Are you going with him, Rose? She'd make me the happiest man in the world if she did. Go on. I mean, I'd go if I were you. Take great care before you answer, Rose. It's a decision that will affect your whole life. We'd all miss you. You know that, Rose. But if you really feel... Uh, there's just a small matter of your status. You would not be married out there, I take it? No. The idea is Rose should come out there and see if she likes it. I am buying her a return boat ticket. <laughs> I'll have it if you don't want it. Quiet, Edward. I'm going. <laughs> I didn't mean to force you to decide in no, public. It's all right, Gregory. I've made my mind up. I'm going with you. Good for you, Rose. Good Wait. luck to you. It so happens I have in my... In my pocket, something, something to see the bargain with. Oh, Gregory. Oh. Oh, oh, Gregory. Oh, look. Look. Ruby. And with Mrs. Bridget. Oh, Rose. I never thought. I never thought. <laughs> Neither did I, to tell the truth. <laughs> Shall, shall we uh, open the whiskey in celebration? It's a wee bit early for whiskey, Mr. Oh, Wilmot. just this once, Miss Drudden, for Rosie's sake. Well, just a suggestion for me and for you, Edward. Lovely. And none at all for you, Ruby. Well, whiskey and chocolate cake, does that go well together? Oh, and very excellent chocolate cake too, Mrs. Bridges. Oh. <laughs> almost, almost as good as your plum cake. Oh, what do you know of my plum cake? <laughs> I was telling Gregory all about your plum cake. After I sat on it. Sat on it? Oh. Hasn't Rose told you of how we met? It's a very funny story. Well, you fell on her. We heard it in a tram. That's right, and squashed the cake flat. <laughs> I uh, hope your old friend didn't mind the replacement too much, Mrs Bridges. My old friend? Do you mean Mrs Beddows? But that was only last Saturday, Rose. You mean you've only known Mr Wilmot for six days? Oh, Mr Hudson, I clean forgot. I promised to take Gregory up to meet Mrs Bellamy, but we won't be more than a minute. You'll see. It's beautiful, Rose. It's quite beautiful. Oh, I'm so pleased for you both. It's marvellous news. Thank you, Mrs Bellamy. I can't imagine this house without you. I suppose I must formally accept your notice, mustn't I? Oh, I'm sorry, madam. I ought to have mentioned. It's all right. You do have a lot to think about. Now, if there's, if there's any help you need, over packing or anything. You will let me know, won't you? 
Thank you, madam. Thank you. How long does it take to get there now? Uh, 50 days out of Tilbury. Cape of Good Hope. That's right. Las Palmas, Cape Town, Adelaide, Melbourne. I do envy you. I love travelling by sea. Have you ever been to Australia, Mrs. Bellamy? No. My husband has promised to take me. Well, you just come and visit us when you do. I will, most definitely. Thank you. Goodbye, Mrs. Bellamy. Goodbye. You couldn't have made a better choice than Rose. I know that. Hello! What's this? This is Mr. Wilmot. Hmm? Rose, Rose, I want a strong black coffee. Mr. Wilmot is Rose's fiance. Rose, Rose's fiance. May I introduce my husband? Hmm? Captain James Bellamy. How do you do? I thought you must be a friend of my wife's. No. Thank you, Mr. Bellamy. Goodbye. Show you back to your hotel. Rose, what about my coffee? You'll just have to ring for Edward, won't you? Huh. Well, we survived it. Mrs. Bellamy approved. As for you and Mr. Hudson. Yeah. Well, he, he is a bit of a wazz, though, isn't he? That's just because you bring out the worst in him. I want you to meet a couple of my friends. Oh, I'd like to. Schoolmaster from Potter's Bar. It's all right. Married my first true love. Now hard feelings are my oldest friends. I'd like you to meet Dorothy. Can you bear it? Who oh, said Little celebration. Day before we sail. Lovely. Well, he was very nicely dressed, Miss Dranson. And I should think he's doing very well for himself, judging by the whiskey. Uh, the whiskey is neither here nor there, Mrs. Bridges. My point is that Rose is in danger of making a very grave mistake. You only say that because he stood up to you and said what he believed in. Oh, that's nonsense, Rose. I'd never judge a man by the beliefs he held. Let me simply make this observation. Uh, with the greatest respect to Rose here, if he is bona fide and comfortably off, why should he pick on Rose? We know Rose's qualities, but a young man like that uh, surely has the pick of a more middle-class type of girl. Well, maybe he feels a more middle-type class of girl wouldn't fancy life on a sheep farm. That is exactly my point, Mrs Bridges, because life on a sheep farm in Australia is not fit for any young woman, and certainly not for someone of Rosie's sheltered experience. She'll be worn to the bone, be nothing better than a skivvy. I'm worn to the bone here, and I'm not afraid of hard work. No, that's true. She's never been afraid of hard work. Yes, yes, well, that may be. And anyway, it's all secondary to my main objection, which is that you cannot hope to know someone well enough in six days. To give your life to them? Oh, sheer folly, Rose. Look, you're not my bleeding father, Mr. Hudson. This is my chance to make something of my life. Something other than endless trundling round this house till I'm too old to walk. And you go and spoil it. I've waited a long time for this, Mr. Hudson. I'd given up open if you want to know. But now it's happened. I love Gregory. He makes me feel good and I trust him. I don't want any advice or interference from anyone, not even you. I'm going, and I'm going to make a success of it. You just watch me. They, uh, they reckon it's worth waiting. That's our ship. You have to take your turn with everybody else. Big enough? Can't wait any longer. Do you? That's what they said about the Titanic. No, I suppose there we're going. Do you think you'd survive in Australia without me? You wouldn't last five minutes, my boy. This one won't be sailing. Wait! I'll be back for the refund. Mr. Wilmot, you're in luck. Somebody's mother doesn't want him to leave home. Here you are, sir. Be deck midships. You're there! It's not quite next to you, but uh, as near as no matter. That's fine. Just sign here, sir. That's it. Dorothy and Hamish Matthews, my oldest friends, need Rose. The future Mrs. Wilmot. Hello, dear. How do you do? Hello, Rose. How do you do? <laughs> no, uh, you sit over there where we can get a good look at you. 
You won't mind us being inquisitive, but uh, we don't know anything about you. What you do or where you come from. Gregory wouldn't tell us anything. Well, it's no secret, is it, Rousey? She lives in a large, imposing house in Eaton Place, with the butler, a cook, and a footman. A house fit for royalty. The royalty's been there, too. The night King Edward VII come to dinner. Oh, yes. I say, that's impressive. All we've ever had is the town clerk of High Barnet. <laughs> <laughs> What exactly is your place in this uh, household, dear? She's head house parlour maid. House parlour maid. Did you take the king's coat? Did he speak to you? Well, yes, he did. As a matter of fact, he said. I hadn't realised Rose was in service, Gregory. Now, reason why should Dorothy? Because I didn't tell you. Rose and I and I are going to show you how to do the tango. I know how to do the tango, thank you. Ah, uh, not the way we do it. I've really no idea. Had you? Now, don't you go and spoil things for them. So that's your childhood, sweetheart. You should have seen her in Sweet Sixteen. Rather a bit away. <laughs> you always have a soft spot for your first love. The one that got away. Don't you worry about it though, then. Brother and sister, really. If they get on so well, why didn't they get married? I came along. <laughs> no, it was never that serious, really. Gregory is not a serious sort of person. It wasn't in those days. It's serious now, of course. Responsibilities now. You'll be all right. I just decided we're coming to see them off tomorrow, Hamish. We're going to wave them off from Tilbury. Wave off the happy couple. Uh, yeah, I want you to know how very much we've all appreciated your work here, Rose, and how very fond of you we've all grown. And uh, I'd like you to accept this little gift of, as a token of our affection. Thank you very much, sir. I hope you'll be very happy in your new life. I'm told Australia isn't such a bad place. At least the weather's good. I just wish Mr. Bellamy could have been here. It's all been such a rush. Yes, yes, I know he'd have very much wanted to say goodbye to himself, but, uh, well, I'll just have to do it for him. You might let us know how you're getting on in your new life, won't you? Goodbye, Rose. And good luck. I'll miss you. Thank you for everything, madam. Cabs arrived. Eight ticket, trunk and suitcase up there. Oh, Mr. Mr. Eisen, I've got a surprise for Rose. Oh, well. never mind that, boy. Quickly now, boy. Quickly. She's still upstairs with Captain Jim. Oh, Ruby, it's not a funeral we're attending. Stop that snivelling. <laughs> oh, now calm yourself, Mrs. Bridges. <laughs> I never thought I'd live to see this name, Stratford. Never. Now, please, please, don't let her see you crying. If she stop. Oh, there you are, Rose. The cab's arrived. Everything's ship shape, is it? Yes, I've folded all the blankets, Mr. Edson. Oh, that's all right, my girl. Daisy's coming out of hospital tomorrow. She'll see to them. Oh, don't let her do too much too soon. She won't be up to it. Oh, don't you worry about that, Rose. We'll look after Daisy. Oh, oh before you go, I, I've got something for you. Oh, Mr. Edson. I had noticed your own one was wearing a wee bit thin. Oh, it's lovely. Rose, on the occasion of her leaving and all good wishes in her future life, from Angus Hudson. Oh, I've been struggling. I treasure it always, and you'll always be with me. Well, if it's a, a comfort to you in the years to come, then it's money well spent. Yes. Come on now. We don't want the boat to sail without you. Yes. 
Well, goodbye, Rose. You'll write to us, won't you? Of course, Sir Ellen. You write to me. Give me all the news. Oh, we will. We will. Oh, I'm snivelling again. Get, get along with you. What in heaven's name is that? Can you hear that, Mr. Hutton? Rose, that's my goodbye present for you. Your what? Well, it's a friend of mine, Mr. Hutton. Well, not really a friend. He's a street musician, you see. I told him what was happening and he agreed to come and play. For nothing? Yes, well, no, for a couple of meat pies. Out of my pantry. It's a lovely idea, <laughs> Edward. Thank you very much. <laughs> Bye, Edward. Mm -hmm. Bye, Mr. Hudson. Bye, everybody. Ruby, Edward, come on, upstairs. Wave her off quickly now. Come on. Okay. It always went like that. There you are. Hmm. Thank you. You're not happy at Jardins, are you? Why? If you wanted to go back to India, I've never been. I might quite like it there. It might be good for us in general. Yes. Well, I don't know that I'm ready to leave England at the moment. I think one of the most unusual qualities that girl had was her utter devotion to her duties. Unusual, I mean, in young people today. Aye, and her sense of mischief on occasion. Good heavens, is that the time? The new girl's coming for our interview any minute. I think mean, I'll always remember her teasing me. <laughs> and her generosity when I was broke. And a happy smile in the face of adversity. Adversity? There's no adversity in this house. No, I mean... Uh, but the funny thing is that we won't remember anything after a bit. I mean, we'll remember her, Rose, and the fact that she existed, but nothing about her. I suppose that's the way it is. With people, I mean, they, they just fade away. What are you talking about, Edward? Is that a cab I hear? Well, I'll go see you, Sutton. Has the new girl arrived in a cab? Oh, I wouldn't be surprised. I'm never surprised at anything about young people nowadays. Come on, Ruby, clear this stuff away. Mr. Hudson, it's Rose. Rose? Oh, for gracious, what can have happened? Oh, it's all right, Rose. It's all right, you're quite safe. Oh, Rose? Rose? Yeah, take a bag, I've got a hat. What now, come happens, on, Rose? Sit Rose? down, the boat sail? Now, take things Was that a fog? Now, do no. cloud her, Edward. Where's Gregory? Mm -hmm. Excuse me, sir. Uh, madam, I thought you should know Rose has returned. Why? She forgotten something? Well, what happened? Uh, well, it's difficult to know for certain, madam, but it seems the gentleman, her fiancé, already has a wife in Melbourne. Well, well, well. How did she stumble on that? From some friends of his who came to see them off, sir, a schoolmaster and his wife from Potter's Bar. It was hard to get a clear account of what happened, but it seems she had rather a lucky escape. Yes. How is she? Oh, she was overwrought to begin with, madam, but she picked up quite quickly when she realised where she was in her old familiar surroundings. She's in her room now, madam. I see. Thank you for telling us, Hudson. 
Oh, uh, madam, I took the liberty of turning away the new applicant for the post of house parlourmaid. Oh, yes, of course. Poor old Rose. Trust her to get mixed up with a scoundrel. Do you believe it? has told us what happened. I am very sorry. I'm sorry for all the trouble caused. I'll give you back your trunk, madam, of course. Oh, Rose. May I sit down? He had a wife in Melbourne. These friends who came to see you off told you so. Yes. But he's separated, isn't he? Perhaps divorced. Well, she's not living with him on the farm. Oh, I don't know about that. I know one can be wrong about people, but... He seems so clearly like a man who'd, who'd worked hard and, and built something up for himself and was looking for a wife to share it with. He found what he was looking for in you. Yes, but he wasn't honest with me, was he? Are you being honest with me? Mrs. Bellamy? Rose! We are good enough friends to be frank with each other, aren't we? I want to help. You can't help. It's all over and done with. The boat's gone and he's gone for good. Rose? He was free, wasn't he? Why didn't you go with him? Like I said, he had a wife. He didn't want me. Never did want me. Just making fun of me, that's all. Don't cry, Rose. Oh, don't cry. It was awful. Docks, people pushing. I, I couldn't get through. Dirty old boat. His friends laughing. As soon as I saw them with him, I felt I didn't know him. It wasn't real. I felt sick. I had to start running back here. Didn't he follow you and try and stop you? I saw him look, reach out. But people pushed. His friends pushed him on about, leastwise the woman did. She didn't want me to marry him. I knew that first time I met her. I thought I wasn't good enough. Of course you were good enough. He thought so, didn't he? That's what's important. What's it got to do with anyone else? Mr. Hudson was right. You can't get to know someone that quick. It takes a long time. Silly. Leaving all you know, all your friends, for a perfect stranger. I know, but... Sometimes it's important. Silly. You won't tell them downstairs, will you? Or Captain James? Of course I won't. This is between you and me. Well, you get some rest. You must be very tired. Well, were you right? No. He had a wife. Oh, probably just as well. Rose isn't the marrying kind. Ah, happier here. Yes. You're probably right. 